Grab a cup of coffee and start your Sunday with Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Every Sunday morning at 9 on The Talk of New York, AM 970, The Apple. Visit CYACYL.com. Good morning. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Today's guest is a modern-day David who loves a good brawl with today's Goliaths. She thrives on being a voice for those who don't know how to yell. She's become a champion for men and women supporting them in their personal struggles. Erin Brockovich became a household name after Julia Roberts portrayed her in a movie about her entrance onto the environmental activism scene. Erin Brockovich is president of Brockovich Research and Consulting, and she continues her legal work and consults on numerous investigations. She's a popular speaker on the international lecture circuit and travels the world for personal appearances. Erin hosted ABC TV's Challenge America with Erin Brockovich and Lifetime's Final Justice. She has a television talk show in development. Erin is the author of the New York Times business bestseller, Take It From Me, Life's a Struggle, But You Can Win. Her new book, the second in a series she calls her cause novels, is entitled Hot Water. According to Erin, they're written in the hope that her readers will pick up the baton when it comes to social causes that make the world safer and better for us all. Good morning, Erin. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, good morning. Wow, thanks for the cool intro there. When you hear that, sometimes do you wonder who the heck is that person? Yeah, I thought you were talking about Julia Roberts. No, ah, that's my joke. <laughs> I know sometimes some of the guests, they sit there and they're like, okay, I'm waiting for that really awesome person to appear. <laughs> but, who are you But that's about? you. But that is you and what you've been able to accomplish in your life is wonderful. And that's why I'm so glad that you're here today to share that with us because we're so here at Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we're about inspiring and motivating people to get out there and make those changes that'll put them on their personal journey of, of passion and, and that can always help another person. So I'm really, really happy that you're here. So thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks. So it was really thank you for having me. Now, Erin, you mentioned Julia Roberts a moment ago and, and as I said in the intro, your name became a household name after the award-winning movie under the name of Erin Brockovich. And that movie portrayed the story about your entrance into social activism. Were you always conscious about social issues or was it something that happened by accident, quite literally? A little bit of both. Um you know, it's, it's, a lot of it's my upbringing. I was born and raised in Kansas, and so, you know, I have a terrific sense of just the freedom of being outdoors and, you know, fresh water and, 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 and our environment. I mean, I love it. As a kid, I loved it. And my father, who actually worked for industry, is the one that taught me the value of clean water. He used to always tell me in my lifetime water would become a commodity. I think he's going to be absolutely right. And um, that the greatest gift we have is good health, the love of our family, and, and clean water. And, you know, it wasn't until I had my own children and I got involved in that Hinckley case that everything that my parents offered me about what was important is important. And once in a while we move away from our priorities or we have to reprioritize what's important to us. And I think that we're in a phase again where we are truly recognizing that it is about good health, and clean water, and often our honesty and transparency with each other and um, mutual respect and getting back to ourselves and our neighbors. And so I think it's been missing, and because of that, we are now facing issues that we're going to have to turn around. Erin, you mentioned the Hinckley case a, a few moments ago, and for some of our listeners who may not be familiar with what you're talking about, can you just give us a, a brief background about that case and how you got involved with it? Well, I got involved because uh, I had met the law firm of Mastery in Vitito out in California, and how I was introduced to them was I had a car wreck um, that resulted in a neck surgery and, you know, a PI accident, and they were my, my attorney. I didn't, um, you know, for our all practical purposes, that, that litigation that I was involved in certainly didn't turn out the way I had been told that it would. I was a single mother with three children, and I needed a job. Mm -hmm. And I basically really begged Ed Masry to hire me, and begrudgingly he did. And one day he brought a file in to me. He was actually looking for another secretary, but I happened to be in that same you know office space with her to open a file, and he asked if I would do so. And I really didn't know what I was doing, but I just said that I 
knew what I was doing because it was the boss after all, and I had to do a good job. So I took the time to really look into this file that is now what has become the film Aaron Brockovich was a company who had known for some 20-plus years that they had been contaminating the groundwater with a poisonous chemical, and they were getting to the point where they were going to have to figure out how to either say something or hide it so they wouldn't get sued. Long story short, they got caught. And the end result is, you know, because of this secret and a company's deception, lives and the environment were destroyed. And this is a scenario playing itself out way too often. And it's that secret that we've got to understand is the very root cause of our problems and um, lost lives and lost environment. And we've got to figure out a way to reprioritize who we are and why we do what we do and practice with some honesty and be more forthwith to our communities and, and the people that live within them because we're, we're creating some problems. Erin, I think so many of us have this attitude that I'm only one person. What can I do? And what would you say to that? What can one person do? You, you know, one person can do a whole lot. I think that we're all starting to recognize that Superman's not coming and uh, agencies aren't necessarily going to be here to save the day, nor is some lawsuit, that we're going to have to bring back our country by just getting back to ourselves and our community at a local level. To, to get back home, you've got to come home. And, and what I mean by that is people have got to recognize, as an individual, you can make a difference. First and foremost, you can make a difference just for you. And when you make a difference just for you, it's contagious because – then you have a better outlook or you feel more empowered or you're more confident. And then guess what? You can make a difference for your child. You can make a difference for your spouse. You can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference in your community. So everything really will begin with you. You know, I try to teach on my own lecture circuit a program I called RAM, which is about realization and assessment and motivation of oneself. And if you can just start with there, you find yourself more aware, um, further educated, and more confident to talk about a cause or an issue that maybe is important to you that might be going on, and then you can get more to join your voice, and then it just becomes, you know, cyclical, and it snowballs, and it feeds itself, but it will begin with you. Well, I think sometimes we start out with the best of intentions, and then often we hit those walls, and and we become defeated, and I'm sure that when you were going after this, this giant, this large corporation, there were many times when you wanted to give up. So where did you find that courage to persevere? Where did you get that strength to continue on this path? You know, I relied on old things that my parents offered to me. You know, um, for me, growing up was difficult. I'm a dyslexic. I have a learning disability. I would oftentimes feel defeated. And I felt more defeated more often than not because somebody else told me I was defeated. Not because oh. I saw that I was defeated, but somebody else was telling me I was defeated. Oh, those voices that, that just yeah. get inside our heads. And that happens to all of us. And, you know, my mom taught me to have stick to And a funny little word, but it's an actual word in the Webster's Dictionary, and its definition is propensity to follow through in a determined manner, dogged persistence of obligation and stubbornness. And as a kid, I became the little engine that could. And I have to tell you to this day, when I see that obstacle, and I do, I hear my mom's voice. And mm-hmm. you've got to get your stick to on. And so much is about your perception of who you are. And so don't be distracted because somebody else has told you you can or you can't do something. I'm often told that, well, you're not a lawyer, you're not a doctor, you're not a Ph.D., but you know what? You don't have to be any of those things to be a human being and to have compassion and some common sense and believe in yourself and do something outside of yourself to make someone else's life better. Do you feel that your work now, is this your true calling in life? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I love being able to embark on projects like writing the book Hot Water because it's a different way to tell a similar story but yet can be a daunting story that could help inspire someone else to want to make that social change. And I'll break away into certain little things, but this, this is my passion. You know, I'm, I'm recently in uh, discussions with Google on a map because I get so many emails. I've tried to start to plot and trend these locations of where people are reporting groundwater pollution and disease, you know, issues that appear to be like excess disease in their community. 
And I have 1,700 sites in the United States alone, and people are still reporting. And I want us to, to look at that. And it isn't about a blame game or trying to file some other lawsuit. It is about people are trying to tell us a story, and somebody's not listening. And when you visually see that, it's, it's a cry for help. And I hope that by working with Google and if we can really isolate these locations and, and look at what the source could be, see, then we can begin to correct the problem and find a solution, but not until we look at it. So I would have to say this will be my life's passion and, you know what's, and my life's work. I was going to say, Aaron, what's interesting to me as I'm listening to you speak and as I've researched you in preparation of this interview, your life to me, is just a, an amazing example of how we never know where something's going to lead us. Had you never gotten in, in that accident, you would not have walked into that law office, you would not have stumbled upon that file, and you would not have made such an impact in people's lives. So what I try to explain to people is you just never know where your life is going to take you, and you should be open to every opportunity and every road that's presented in front of you because you just never know when you're going to stumble upon your passion. Absolutely. You don't. And that it's very, very true for me. And, you know, I really believe, and it's so much easier to say once you've been through the struggle and you've come out the other side, it's not as easy to say once you're in the struggle. But looking back, it was my very disability that I thought was going to be my downfall was actually my saving grace. And it was every obstacle that I have faced and being able to muster up my stick to and and relying on some real core values and believing in, you know, my own self. You know, we talk about logic all the time. And for me, logic was just a dressed up word for common sense. And, and those are skills that I used. And looking back now, it was that very obstacle and that very challenge that I was over able to overcome got me where I am today. I wouldn't have changed, nor would I change a thing. Erin, we are going to let our listeners think about that while we take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Let's talk about post-pregnancy stretch marks. Your sister got them, and you're afraid you'll get them too. Or worse, you already have them, thanks to that beautiful baby you gave birth to. What should you do? This is Dr. Brian Glatt, and I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon at the Premier Plastic Surgery Center of New Jersey in Morristown. The key to managing stretch marks is all about prevention. Indeed, genetics is a big factor too, but there are a few things you can do to give yourself a fighting chance against those unsightly lines. During your pregnancy, try to gain weight gradually. This allows the skin to stretch more slowly and lessen stretch marks caused by quicker weight gain. Eat foods with a high content of vitamins A, C, D, E, and zinc, omega-3s, essential fatty acids, and protein. This will help your skin to produce more elasticity and aid in the production of extra healthy collagen. Remember to drink up, water that is. Staying adequately hydrated during pregnancy is thought to enhance the moisture content of the skin, which may also help with prevention of stretch mark formation. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Dry skin that is being stretched is more likely to damage the underlying collagen and elastin fibers. Moisturized skin will have increased elasticity. Look for creams made from aloe vera, cocoa butter, grapeseed, vitamin E, collagen, provitamin B5, germ oil, aroma oil, or essential oils. All these can help to prevent the formation of stretch marks by moisturizing and increasing the elasticity of the skin. This is Dr. Brian Glatt, and I hope you've enjoyed these easy tips to reduce the formation of stretch marks during your pregnancy. If you have any post-pregnancy plastic surgery needs, contact me at my office at 973-889-9300 or visit my website at www.drbrianglatt.com. I look forward to seeing you soon. Change your attitude, change your life, and big, believe, inspire, grow. Salute the entrepreneurial spirit of small business owners, people who follow a dream, work hard, and make it happen. This week's Spotlight on Smartly Organized is brought to you by REA, a global consulting firm that provides career and transition services to individuals and relocating families worldwide. Are you tired of constantly picking up after your family? Do you feel stressed out about the stuff that seems to multiply before your eyes? Are you losing valuable time searching for your keys, meeting notes, or other important documents? Do you feel frazzled by all of the competing demands on your time? Do you resolve every year to get more organized? 
If you answered yes to any of these questions, take comfort in knowing you're not alone. Our fast-paced, rapidly changing world makes it challenging to get and stay organized. Andrea Walker from Smartly Organized can help. Andrea is an experienced professional organizer who will help you take back control of your stuff and your time. From home or business organization to time and task management to student study skills, Smartly Organized provides solutions to increase your productivity and eliminate stressful clutter and disorganization. Let Andrea from Smartly Organized help you reclaim control in your life and help you achieve your New Year's resolution. For more information, visit www.smartlyorganized.com or call Andrea at 917-846-9953. And be sure to check out Smartly Organized on Facebook. Six months ago, I was transferred to Seattle, Washington. My family and I made the move. My wife, Kay, initially focused on getting our new home built, enrolling our children in school, and maintaining our temporary housing. Throughout the process, an REA consultant stayed in close contact with Kay until she was ready to start her job search. After Kay enrolled, her REA consultant called her about an opportunity that was a perfect fit. The consultant helped Kay update her resume, provided salary information and market comparisons and coached her on interview strategies. Within two weeks, Kay was offered the position and the REA consultant coached her through the salary negotiation process. Kay accepted the job. Thank you, REA, for making our move and transition easy. If you need career relocation assistance, career transition outplacement services, or executive coaching, contact the experienced professionals at REA. For more information, please visit r-e-a.com. This is professional career coach Elise Holtzman. Have you ever gotten halfway through the workday and realized that despite being busy, you haven't gotten very much done? Instead of constantly being distracted by the phone, email, and interruptions from clients and coworkers, take control of your time with these three tips for maximizing productivity. First, turn off the beep that notifies you that a new email has come in. Instead of responding to each individual email, you can read them at defined intervals. Second, create a priority hour each day during which you don't answer the phone or permit walk-ins. You can do a solid block of work and can return messages once your time is up. And third, stop interrupting yourself. Minimize personal phone calls, web surfing, and purely social conversation until the bulk of your work is done. For more information about how to create career success and satisfaction, visit www.eliseholtzman.com or call me at 908-233-2273. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Our guest today is social activist and author Erin Brockovich. Erin, before break, you were explaining to us the importance of us getting involved in social causes and and in doing so, having a, a belief in ourselves and our ability. Do you think that with all that's going on in the world today, we're too apathetic? Oh, we, yeah. So I see it. I see a lot of that going on, and you know, I can understand why people are that way, but. Yeah, we, we have become a little bit of that society, and I don't know, maybe we've become that way for a while, and maybe that's why we're in some of the scenarios that we're in, but we have become, and that's a, that's a shame. We have to change that. Do you think it's because we've just become so desensitized with all the stimulus around us? Well, I think that we have become a little desensitized. I think that, you know what, there's so much rhetoric going on out there. Sometimes we don't know who to believe, and I think that uh, we, we, we get complacent. Um, we think that things will not necessarily ever happen to us. It's always going to happen to someone else. So we become disconnected from our environment. But we've got to get reconnected. And, and, and remember, everything we are and who we are and how we become what we are and what sustains us as a global society is, in fact, this environment. And, and we have become detached, and we need to reattach. It's really very important that we reprioritize um, our lives and what's important. You know, it's interesting because I'm about to to date myself age-wise, but growing up, we had, I think, five television channels, and, you know, we didn't have half of the communication that's presented to us today. And yet, with all of the cable channels and all the news and all the reports, I don't think we're any better off today than we were then. You just touched upon that. We don't know who to believe or what to believe. So how can we determine what the truth is, what we need to fight for, and then take action in doing that? Well, the truth lies within you. And as long as we become detached from our very environment and just sit on our couch and and look at our games, uh, I'm not sure we will progress. You know, I'm out there 
every day in the field, and I, I would tell you my observation, is we're not progressing. We're backsliding. Right. And I think that we need to become hands-on. It isn't until you get out there and you see it and you experience it that you become electrified by it. And I think that it's, it's very important. And, again, when I say reconnect to the environment, that is getting up off our buns, getting outside of our buildings and getting down on the ground and putting your feet in those blades of grass or um, getting out and, and looking at the wildlife or the absence of wildlife and, and seeing what's happening in your world around you. And what makes me nervous is when I think about future generations because our kids are not being exposed to this. No, and we need to. Or we're just going to become robots. I mean, we, we, we're human beings that have uh, great sets of, of gifts, uh, intuitions and uh, gut reactions and observation. And we have to be hands-on for those skills to, to show themselves and, and to kick in. And I think that we're doing a huge disservice to this next generation if we don't allow them to step out of that box and experience something hands-on. You know, I see youth all the time. You can teach them something in a classroom, but when you take them outside and, and you let them see the effect of water pollution that it has on frogs and fish, and, I mean, it's an eye-opening experience for them, then learning becomes intriguing and fun, and they want to pursue the science and the technology and do something to change it. But it's not the same process if we're just sitting inside and, and working on our iPads and our iPhone 4s and, and getting lost. Technology is such a great thing, but it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. And if we become desensitized and we just lose that human side of us, um, I don't always feel encouraged by the future, but I'm always hopeful that people will get back to some basics and um, get out there and get hands-on. And don't just sit and watch the world. Be a part of the world. And that means you're going to have to come out in it. An important point that I'd like to make, I don't want our listeners to think that it always has to be in such a grand way, the way that you have, the impact that you've made, but just doing something simple, getting involved in a, in a small change, it, it doesn't have to be something that's so daunting that they're afraid to take a chance and get involved. Oh, I completely agree with you. You know, not everything that we get involved in, and even in my own life, is something that results in a, in a movie or a series of books, but it's just about... Even the smallest thing, as we said in the beginning, that, you know, you can make a choice. And I like to talk about choice a lot, and sometimes we forget about that because it's just like second nature and we're choosing and doing things all the time. But if you really stop for a moment and look at some of your choices and decision and just do something as simple as choosing to get involved, through, through choice you have a say in the future. And that, that doesn't mean it has to be on a grand scale. That could mean you actually have a say in your own future. Um, whether it be the sake of a child, the safety of your child, or yourself, or your education, you can just choose to get involved and change your own life. And when you change your life and then you're empowered to change another, again, like I said, it's a snowball effect. It doesn't have to be something on a grand scale. And you're right. Oftentimes people think, I'm one person. Well, what difference can I make? Well, don't sell yourself short. You're one person and you can make a difference just in your own life. I've read that you said your favorite movie is Pay It Forward, and I, and I love that movie. I, I, I love, love the concept. Movie. And I think that that's the philosophy that we need to to just live our lives by, paying it forward. And, and that's really the key. Are there any tips or, or just strategies that you can offer to help people to go out there and pay it forward? Maybe some causes they can get involved in. Well, you know, whatever their cause uh, is, they can clearly get involved in. And, you know, I talk about what I call the four L's, which is logic, leverage, loyalty, and love. And whether it be uh, for a community trying to take on a cause or an individual person, uh, you're, we're constantly searching for the logic and everything. But you know what? Logic is your common sense. And your common sense is, is that, that heart and gut reaction and response that you intuitively know is right or wrong. And if you just will let your common sense go to work for you, you'll end up logically doing the right thing. And, and don't be afraid to get some leverage. You know, sometimes it helps to have another voice, and there's nothing wrong with being united. So go out there and, and don't be afraid to ask someone else, uh, I have this cause, would you join me and extend your hand? It, be loyal to your cause. Be loyal to yourself 
and your neighbors. And ultimately, you know what's really important, and I know everyone's kind of like going, oh, my gosh, we're going off on some strange tangent. But the bottom thing that keeps every one of us going, it's really love. You have to ask yourself every single day, why do we do the things that we do? I mean, sometimes we beat our head against a wall. Why is it that we do the things we do? And ask yourself, if there was no money to chase, if there was no power to be had, you know, what would your motivation be then? Well, I've got to tell you what, when you back it up, it's going to be ultimately, it's love. It is love for your family, love for your health, love for yourself, love for your country, love for your water, love for your freedom, all of it. It is it just an innate thing that human beings have that we are empowered by. And so if you can go out there and do things with some common sense, loyalty to yourself, united with your neighbors, and do it out of love and for the right reason. I'm telling you, in fact, I promise you, and I am guaranteeing you, you're going to have a really good outcome. Well said, Erin. The book is Hot Water by Erin Brockovich. If you'd like more information about Erin and her work, you can visit Brockovich.com. As always, you can visit our website, CYACYL.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our website, listen to past shows as podcasts, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and take part in our book club. Erin, again, it was such a privilege for me to have you here today. I am so glad that you spent time with us, and I wish you much continued success with your life-changing work. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for all your time. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.